Good evening and welcome to our service of Compline this Tuesday the 30th of May. Um, <clears throat> tonight we are doing um, an Iona version of evening prayer and we are celebrating oh, three people. We have got first of all Josephine Butler see find her in my little book she was a social reformer um so uh we are also celebrating oh joan of arc uh, who was a visionary and also apollo kivabulea who was a priest in, and evangelist in central africa so um I'm Reverend Carol with the Kingsbury and Baxter Lee Group of Parishes. Here's a bit of information about the three people we are celebrating this evening. So first of all, Josephine Butler. Josephine Butler, nay Gray, was born in Northumberland in April 1828 and baptised on this day, the 30th of May, in the same year. She married an Anglican priest in 1852. She became incensed by the way contemporary society treated prostitutes, most of whom were forced into such activity through desperate poverty. From 1869, she campaigned for the repeal of the legislation which put all opprobrium onto the women concerned, and the issue became international after she travelled in Europe addressing meetings in 1874 and 1875. Her campaign succeeded with the repeal of the Contagious Diseases Act in 1883. She was a devout Anglican and a woman of prayer, basing her spirituality on that of Catherine of Siena, whose biography she wrote. Uh, Josephine died on the 30th of December 1906. So, Joan of Arc. Joan of Arc was born at Dorigny in 1412, the daughter of a peasant farmer. She first heard voices of particular saints when she was 14 years old, telling her to save France, which was caught up in the Hundred Years' War with England. Though at first she was dismissed, her credibility increased when some of her predictions began to come true. She managed to identify the disguised Dauphin, later to become Charles the Seventh, whose approval she gained. She persuaded troops to be sent to relieve or Orléans and, uh, and rode at their head wearing white armour. They were successful in battle, which increased the morale of the army and enhanced the reputation of Joan. When the Dauphin was crowned king at Rheims, she stood at his side. Her voices had warned her that her life would be short, yet she was dangerously naive in not seeing the jealousies she provoked. After some failures in battle, she lost favour and was eventually sold by the Duke of Burgundy to the English. Tried in a court for heresy by the Bishop of Beauvais and burned at the stake on this day, in 1431. 25 years later, the Pope formally declared her innocent. She was made second patron of France after her canonization in 1920. And finally, uh, about Apollo Kivabulea. Apollo Kivabulea's first contact with Christian teaching was in 1884 and he was baptised the following year, becoming a teacher in the Church of Uganda. He went as an evangelist and catechist to Boga in the Belgian Congo, and was ordained priest in 1903. He built many churches and prepared countless catechumens for baptism. He spent the rest of his life at Boga, training teachers, supervising the school and evangelising the people of the forest. After his death on this day in 1933, the Church Missionary Society sent British missionaries to carry on his work. So there you have it. Gosh, sometimes we don't have anybody to celebrate. Oh, sorry. And today, three. Anyway, let us take a moment of quiet as I attempt to share my screen in the usual way. 
That's the one I want. So, this is the Iona Evening Liturgy D from a We Worship book, Fourth Carna Incarnation. I think they're up to the sixth incarnation now. So we have Josephine Butler at the top, Joan of Arc there, and Apollo at the bottom. So let us start by listening to Alleluia. Beneath the mists of time, before the world began, beyond our understanding, in the beginning, God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Fathering history, mothering creation, parenting Earth's people from the beginning, God. Alleluia, Alleluia. Expecting the right moment, preparing the right way, revealing the right person for each new beginning. God. Alleluia. Alleluia. We believe in one God, maker and mover of heaven and earth. Do we listen to the Lord is my shepherd?
let us pray. God, God the maker, maker of colour, sound, texture, quietness, and the restless beauty in living things, we bless you. God, God the maker, maker of granite and mustard seed, of grey cloud and starlight, of earthquake and heartbeat, we bless you. God, God the maker, maker of all that is unseen, of all that has been, of all that words could never capture, we bless you. God, God our maker, we, the children of your love, the creatures of your kindness, the guardians of your creation, bless you. We bless you for making, your trusting, your loving, your never-ending goodness. Amen. And our psalm this evening, Psalm 8. <clears throat> o Lord our God, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Your majesty is praised above the heavens. On the lips of children and babies, you have found praise. To foil your enemy, to silence the foe and the rebel. When I look at the heavens, the work of your hands, at the moon and the stars which you arranged, what are human beings that you should remember them? Mere mortals, that you should care for them. You have made them in your own image and crowned them with glory and honour. You have given them responsibility for your handwork and put all things under their dominion. All of them, sheep and cattle, yes, even the savage beasts, birds of the air and fish that make their way through the waters. O Lord our God, how glorious is your name in all the earth. Listen for the word of the Lord. Our ears are open. Jesus said, Come to me, all you that are weary and are carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And we listen to him, my prayer by Voches 8. <laughs>
Let us pray for God's world, that its beauty may be preserved, its variety retained, its integrity respected. Lord, hear us. That pollution and cruel exploitation might cease, so that rivers can clap their hands, waste places burst into flower, valleys laugh and sink, wildlife live in safety, and all as you intended. Lord, hear us. That the children of tomorrow may not need a museum to show them the wonders of nature today. Lord, hear us. That the poorest nations of the world may not harvest their fields only to fill foreign tables. Lord, hear us. That Christ, who pointed to the birds, the flowers, the corn, the sunset, might not find their beauty lacking were he to return. Lord, hear us. Hear us, creator of all. Convert the hearts of those who ravage the earth and strengthen the resolve of those who respect it. And since the earth is your gift to us, Prevent us from destroying by thoughtlessness that which is not ours to own. Amen. Listen to deep peace.
Bless to us, O oh God, the moon that is above us, the earth that is beneath us, the friends who are around us, your image deep within us, the rest which is before us. Amen. concludes our service of night prayer for this Tuesday 30th of May. I wish you all a peaceful, quiet and safe night and look forward to seeing you again next week. In the meantime, God bless. Take care. <laughs>